Steve Zook, welcome back to Folks Who Channel and the Guitar Ladder System. And uh, I've had a lot of people ask me how I invented my Speed Pick, which is marketed by. Here's, here's the actual wood prototype we made years ago. The Speed Pick uh, is marketed by Dunlap Guitar Accessory Company. Here's one of the small ones. I actually have a letter on my wall from Mr. Les Paul, who wrote me a letter, which means a lot to me, saying he tried it. It's very good. But uh, a lot of people have asked me how I was able to get the Speed Pick to market, which did take me seven years, but I learned so much doing it. A lot of things I learned that I can share with you that will help you market your invention much quicker. This is the actual wood prototype we had made, and they made like a mold from this, and then they cut that into, a, into cavities of an injection mold. It's quite a process. Anyway, um, I just want to share a few things because honestly, folks, most of these, almost all of those companies out there that say they help inventors are just, um, this is putting it lightly, <laughs> they don't work. That's being nice. It's just a scam. They just make money. They'll get you for as much as they think they, they can you know, get you to, to give them. It doesn't work. You need to develop your products on your own. You need to take the steps on your own. But I'm looking back at when I, I'm 62 right now, but I, I developed my speed pick back in my 20s. And I'm looking back, I'm, I'm going to start with what I call the clarity stage. I have a course called How to Take an Idea Out of Your Mind and Into Your Wallet. But I have a, um, a broken this down into different stages, so I want to talk about the clarity stage and just offer some free information here on YouTube, kind of a good karma thing. Um, the clarity stage is the most important stage of any project. It's like in, in the very beginning, when I first thought of the speed pick, when I first, I actually had read a book called Think and Grow Rich. It's a true story. I was laying in bed one day just kind of resting and uh, I actually in my mind kind of visualized a, a regular guitar pick and uh, you know I was in a normal state of mind. <laughs> Let's get that clear. Anyway, but my mind actually showed me a guitar pick and it was, it was weird. It was like computer graphics. It just, shoo, just shifted, it just shifted into, into this kind of a shape and my mind just showed me this. And I thought, well, that's really cool. And uh, I've been meditating for years and stuff, and I really believe in the power of, of the mind and the subconscious mind. I think it's, it's so powerful. Most of us never tap into it. But it showed me the shape. Now, right when it showed me the shape, I thought, well, that's a great idea. And then, you know, just for a little bit, I started to have these thoughts like, well, how would I ever get that to market? This is back, like I said, when I was maybe 24 years old. You know, I didn't have much money to invest in anything, but some of the first thoughts were kind of strange. And then I, I kind of stopped myself, to be honest. I stopped myself, and I said, maybe it's possible. Maybe it's possible that I could somehow get this guitar pick idea, you know, marketed, you know, bring it into reality. And as corny as it may sound, I don't mean to sound like an Anthony Robbins seminar or something, but it really is true. Your belief system is very, very, very powerful. And if you believe something is possible, you can set in motion a series of events that can help it manifest. Does this mean you just sit around all day and eat pizza and go whoopee? Of course not. You have to take action. But the series of events that allowed me to, to get the first steps going is really interesting. I, I really believe in hunches. And I was sitting around one night thinking about, you know, music, which I'm always thinking about. And I just got a hunch to go, this is when I used to live in Long Beach, go to a place called Noggles and get a burrito. So I said, I didn't fight, I went to Noggles, and this is the place in Long Beach, you get a big, nice, beautiful, big burrito for cheap. And I bought the burrito, and then I got a hunch to go to a record store. Well, long story short, the, I ended up meeting somebody at the record store that ended up investing about $100,000 into the product. And, uh, of course, there was a lot of work, you know, seven years of work after that, and a lot of things to do. But my main point here that I'm trying to make is that you know, if you believe you can do something, you can probably do it unless you're like, you know, five feet two and you're 75 and you want to be a professional basketball player. It needs to be kind of a, a goal that's, you know, attainable, right? Um, there's all kinds of stories of people who have achieved things, but if, if you believe that you can do something and you don't focus on all the obstacles, you don't keep reminding, like even Lee Rittenauer, the great guitar player, said, well, nobody, well, somebody once asked Lee Rittenauer how he was able to become so successful. And he goes, well, nobody ever told me how hard it was. There's a lot of truth to that. That doesn't mean you're not going to have obstacles. It doesn't mean you're not going to have setbacks. And uh, my course, How to Take an Idea Out of Your Mind and Your Wallet, has all kinds of great tips to help you avoid pitfalls that most people, including myself, have fallen into. I've done a lot of things right, but I've made mistakes. Everybody has. But the main point I just want to make in this little video is that when you, when you have something that you want to do, 
it's like, and Anthony Robbins talks about this, and people have been talking about this for, for many, many years, many, many authors and whatnot, but it's, it almost sounds so simple and kind of corny, but it's true. You need to sell yourself on, on the fact that it's possible. Stop reminding yourself of all the obstacles. Stop reminding yourself of all those negative thoughts. You know, you know don't be like 50% maybe I can do it, 50% I'm not really sure. Just suspend your disbelief, as Wayne Dyer would say. Suspend your disbelief. Try to believe that anything's possible. Try to, you know, sell yourself on that. But don't do it in a, like, ah, real tense way. Try to do it in a relaxed way because that way you access what some might call the particle mind or the subconscious mind. So when you have something that you want to do, um, try to entertain the thoughts that, you know, that it's possible. Just try to be positive about it. And even psychologists say sometimes, you know, one out of every five projects will work. Well, so what? It doesn't mean that you don't want to give it a shot. But there's a lot of, a lot, and then another really strong point that can really help you, and this is jumping, way jumping ahead, is learning to be a publicist, learning, learning how to sell news, learning how to write press releases. This is something viable for, I don't care what business you're in right now, I don't care if you're doing, you know, a million a year in business, or 20,000 a year, or, you know, 4 million a month, it doesn't matter. Learning to, to be a publicist and write press releases, get write-ups on yourself, learning to use cause marketing like Famous Amos did, and learning to sell the news angle of what you're doing. And that can get you thousands and thousands of dollars of free advertising. But the little tip I just want to share for today is when you get an idea about doing something, don't immediately go to the negatives and go... Because when I first thought of my speed pick idea, I could have said, oh, you know, how am I going to find the 100000 to get this to market? How am I going to find the money to make them all, and get the patents, etc., etc.? But I, as opposed to going negative, I just kept an open mind and thought maybe it's possible this can happen. And then I started looking for investors and networking and talking to people. And I think sometimes some of these metaphysical books make things sound a little too easy, like The Secret, you know. Uh, not too into that. Um, seen more about marketing. I'm not saying some of the ideas they present have no you know, uh, validity. But you have to hustle, man. You have to work at things. You have to talk to people. I think Colonel Sanders talked to 12, 13, 14, 1,500 people before, or, or more before he found an investor for, for his, his chicken recipe. But, you know, the universe, you know, when you take action, and the old saying, the harder you work, the luckier you get, the universe will give you a little quantum leaps that will help you out. But a lot of times you have to achieve your success in baby steps. And with inventing, you can't just go to some inventing company and pay them 500 bucks or 5,000 and get things going. It just doesn't work that way. And like I said, those companies are rip off. So, you know, if you have an invention, you want to get it to market, um, you have to just go about it the right way. So I do have a course uh, on that. Uh, I am available for consulting, but right now I'm just trying to offer some free information. I'm not worried about selling you anything. Um, but anyway, that's the first step is when you think of an idea, the most powerful thing you can do is to practice believing it's possible. Okay, because that because the subconscious mind is very powerful. When you're positive about something, you bring yourself into alignment with the universe. Things can happen to help you, and the universe is in the business of delivering the uh, the impossible sometimes, you know. But still, I, I like to find kind of a middle ground. The stuff you have to work at things. Some people call it the ten thousand hour rule. It took me seven years to get my speed pick to market. I also invented a patented product called the Zookies. Well, actually, it was, it was developed through Dunlap off my design for the speed pick. My name's on the packaging, so those two products. By the way, try them if you haven't tried them. They're great products, the speed pick and the Zookies. But anyway, I'm going to be offering free information on how to invent something and get it to market. It's a great feeling, and uh, if you love guitar playing, not to change the subject, send me an email to pokesu at gmail.com, P-O-L-K-Z-O-O, pokesu at gmail.com. I'll send you a few a few free samples of the guitar learning system, all right? So keep the faith and practice the art of believing. Ciao. I know, sounds like a journey song, right? <laughs>